Morning, everyone. Um, I'm so sorry for starting a little bit late. My computer just decided to turn into a brick before we started, so I'm um, just getting everything back up and going. Um, so just wanted to, let's do a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, over on the left-hand side, you will see a chat window. Um, you can use this to send in questions. Um, whenever we get toward the end, I'll, um, I'll open that up for um, for you to send any questions, and then I'll try to get those answered. So, all right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So, um, and please, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to send those in um, throughout the presentation, and I can um, answer those toward the end. So, thank you all for joining us this morning. And before you head off to Scandinavia, we wanted to reach out and just to answer some questions that you may have about what to pack, um, exchanging money, where to meet your guide, and things like that. So first I'll go over some just some general information, and then I'll answer some um, questions from that were submitted um, on the registration form, and then I'll open it up for questions at the end. So and then I'll try to get those answers. Now if you have some um, questions related to a specific tour, I may not cover those online today, but I will follow up with you afterwards that your questions are answered. So, all right, so let's get started. Now, my name is Amanda Hancock, and in case you haven't seen me before, I handle many things at Breakfast Tours, and one of them is, of course, hosting webinars. And uh, one of my favorite responsibilities is helping people realize their travel dreams. So with that in mind, I hope you're looking forward to your upcoming trip, and that this presentation will help um, reduce any concerns that you may have about traveling overseas. So a few weeks before you depart on your trip, you can expect to receive a packet of information from our office. And typically we mail those about two to three weeks before your departure date. And we send um, one packet per couple. So in this packet, you'll find the following. You'll find a departure letter with some basic information about your specific tour, a final itinerary, final flight itinerary, luggage tags, uh, a tote bag, contact information for the hotels you'll be staying at while on the tour, airport information, and any additional information that, um, that might pertain to your particular tour. All right. And so uh, other documents that you will want to bring along with you include your passport, airline tickets, and vouchers. So please double check to make sure that your passport is valid for at least three to six months after your return date, and that you have a copy or two of your passport. Um, you'll want to um, keep your passport, of course, in your carry-on, and you may want to leave a copy of your passport with a family member or friend, just in case you happen to lose it or it gets stolen. Um, that way, you can have somebody back home that can help you um, more easily get your passport renewed. So please take a few moments. You'll also want to ensure that your name um, matches your passport um, and your airline tickets. Those are the same. So that is first, middle, and last name. So you may also want to keep your airline receipt to ensure that your miles are credited if you have a frequent flyer account. Um, the airlines are responsible for crediting your points, so if you notice that it's not correct, then you'll want to um, contact them directly. And finally, if you've booked any independent services with us, um, say a pre or post tour package, um, you want to review your pa document packet to make sure that um, you know, you've received all the vouchers um, and documents that you need. Please note that the vouchers will have emergency contact numbers in case you need assistance while traveling. So you're not, you won't be completely on your own. And um, be sure to note any special instructions on your vouchers. And for instance, train vouchers must be exchanged for an actual ticket before you board the train. So on the land portion of your tour, we do allow one suitcase of one carry-on per person. And luggage handling at hotels is provided for one suitcase Thus, your luggage will be delivered and picked up to your room at the beginning and end of your stay. And we do provide two luggage tags per person, so I would recommend putting these tags on your large suitcase as well as your carry-on. 
So you may also want to put a label with your name, address, and phone number inside your suitcase just in case, in case your tag becomes separated. I don't know how many luggage tags I have floating around out there that have been lost. So most airlines do allow um, one piece of free check luggage on international flights. Now, if you do have a domestic ticket booked in conjunction with your international flight, the airlines may charge the baggage fee, so you may want to check with the airline for departing to see if any fees apply. Typically, your check luggage can weigh up to 50 pounds, and the dimensions cannot exceed 62 inches, and that's um, length plus width plus height. And for your carry-on, typically the weight cannot exceed 22 pounds, and the dimensions should not go over 45 inches, and again, that length plus width plus height. Um, most of the time, you'll see um, people will carry, um, their check luggage will be the large roller bag, and then their carry-on can be um, like a duffel bag or a smaller roller bag. Um, a, the tote bag that we include in your luggage packet, that's also a great um, carry-on that you can use. So um, because airlines each have their own individual um, luggage allowance and limits, um, we do recommend that you contact your um, airline directly just to make sure that you have the most um, up-to-date information. And here is the, uh, the contact information for each of the airlines, most of the major carriers that we use. So inside your suitcase, you may want to pack the following. Uh, first, casual clothing. And it's completely appropriate for all of our tours. For the nights that we do have dinner included, you may want to bring um, some slacks and a nice shirt or a blouse. As Scandinavians do like to dress up for dinner, but it's completely optional. Um, clothing that can be layered is definitely recommended because the temperatures can change uh, depending on where you're traveling during the day. Um, anytime you're on the water, it will be a little bit colder. And anytime you travel north um, in the northern parts of Norway, you can expect it to be cooler than what you'll find in the southern portion. Good walking shoes are a must. Um, You'll be sightseeing along cobblestones, um, over uneven surfaces, so definitely have some good walking shoes. Um, you just, just leave the heels and the flip-flops and things like that at home. Um, bring, I, I, somebody did ask about hiking boots. Um, I typically do not bring my hiking boots with me just because I know on tour I'm not going to be, quote, per se, doing a lot of hiking. Independently, I probably would just because I, I tend to be a little more active away from the tour. Um, so if you do feel like you might do some hiking on your own, then throw those in your suitcase and it's better to have them along, I think. You may also want to bring a raincoat um, with a removable lining, it's, it's a good choice. Um, or you can bring a rain poncho or an umbrella, just whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I would also recommend a light coat or a jacket. Um, you may need it in the morning or during the evening. And you may also want to bring a swimsuit if you enjoy um, swimming. But some of the pools do have, or some of the hotels do have pools um, or spas that you may not take advantage of. And finally, leave your valuables at home. If it will create an emotional or financial hardship for you, it's best just to leave it behind. Typically, I travel with just some cheap earrings. Um, I'll have my wedding ring on, and that's in a watch. And that's pretty much it. Um, in case your luggage is delayed, I would recommend packing a change of clothing in your carry-on. Uh, and if you're traveling with um, your husband or wife or whatever, uh, put some of your clothes in their suitcase and you can swap out just in case one bag is delayed, you're not completely without um, some clothes. If you're planning on visiting family and friends when in Scandinavia, you may want to bring a small gift, especially if they're extending uh, hospitality to you in some manner, if they're having you over for dinner or they're taking you to the family farm, things like that. Appropriate gifts may be an American flag or a wind sock, books, um, calendars, a cap, shirts, or other items that are unique to your city or state, college or professional sport clothing or caps, uh, Native American or country and western themed items, liquor or liqueurs, and if you're meeting up with any kids, um, anything from Disney, um, candy, clothing, puzzles, um, cartoon characters, all of that is appreciated. Some other items that you may want to include in your suitcase would be an extra memory card and batteries for your camera, snacks, and a refillable water bottle. The water in Norway and Scandinavia is really good, so you can just fill it up in the tap um, before you leave the hotel and you have a, a good source of water throughout the day. 
a travel alarm clock um, or a calculator. And a lot of times these can be found on your uh, smartphone, so you don't necessarily have to pack that, but it's um, good to know where those are on your phone. Washcloth. Many of the hotels in Scandinavia do not have washcloths, so if you um, tend to use those to wash your face in the evening or whatever, I would pack those. Tissues. Uh, safety pins or a sewing kit, medications, and that includes prescription and over-the-counter. Um, over-the-counter drugs are not as easy to come by in Scandinavia, so if you tend to, you know, use aspirin, um, you know, or uh, like I, I bring Claritin for myself um, for allergies, so I would definitely pack those. Band-aids and a first aid kit, just in case. A converter and or an adapter, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Sunscreen and sunglasses, extra eyeglasses or repair kit, uh, or if you wear contacts, extra contacts and solutions. I know I spent one time in Norway trying to buy a contact solution and it was really hard to find, so I would recommend bringing extra. Um, maps and travel information, spot remover such as a tie stick or a wipe, an inflatable pillow or an eye mask. Uh, again, an umbrella or a poncho is always a good thing to have. Uh, a lot of people like to bring a journal to record their favorite memories of the day or just, um, you know, write down where they have been. A small day pack for sweaters, your camera, snacks and water, and something similar that you can just put on your back, um, like here in the picture. Um, something like that would be great. And then plastic baggies. You'll find uh, 101 uses for plastic baggies while you're traveling, so I usually try to include some of those. So the climate in Scandinavia is very similar to that in the northeastern U.S., though it's rarely as hot in the summer or as cold in the winter. So if you are traveling in June, July, or August, you can expect um, mid-50s to mid-60s, depending on where you're at um, in Norway, uh, Sweden, and Denmark. In Iceland, you'll find that it's a little bit cooler, so you may want to bring a little bit, um, heavier coat if you're traveling. Uh, in Iceland, or if you're traveling in northern Norway, you might find that it's a little bit cooler there as well. So, just to give you some ideas. And it does rain, so again, we do recommend bringing an umbrella, a rain poncho, or um, you know, a rain jacket. So, we get asked quite often what's the difference between a converter and an adapter. So, a converter. The world runs on two types of electricity, 110 volts for 20 volts. So most devices in North America run on 110. So while the rest of the world runs on 220. So you can look on your device, whether it be um, your computer charger, your camera charger, uh, hair curling iron, whatever, and usually there is a label that's affixed to the back of the device or on the um, AC transformer box or molded into the plastic of the plug that will tell you what um, electricity this device needs. So it's either 110 volts or 220. Um, a lot of times now it's dual voltage, so it would work in your situation. So if your device is dual voltage, then all you'll need is an adapter, which is this black um, little two-pronged plug that basically just changes the plug from our plug to the European um, the two prong. So um, that's the type that you'll need for Scandinavia. They usually cost about three to five bucks. Uh, if you do need a converter, I know uh, my hair um, hair straightener is not dual voltage, so I have to travel with a converter, and th that is the more bulky, um, you know, little switch up there that actually converts to electricity. And that one is a little bit more expensive, but you can usually still find those at uh, Best Buy. Um, Walmart, Target, things like that. Um, I think the one that I got was about thirty dollars. So. And we do get a lot of questions about currency, so I wanted to make sure and include that. So Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Iceland each have their own currency known as the krona, and in Finland they use the euro. The currency of the five countries are not interchangeable. So if you are, for instance, on our captivating Scandinavia tour. You're going from Norway to Denmark to Sweden, and you will need currency in all three if you plan on um, doing some shopping or tipping or whatever. 
So the easiest place to exchange your money is at your arrival airport. You can also exchange money at banks and some post offices. Uh, your tour director will allow some time uh, to exchange money when you arrive, so there's no need to do that here in the U.S. unless you just feel more comfortable and you want to have money before you arrive. You will find that major credit cards, such as Visa, MasterCard, and in some larger stores, American Express, are, are honored. So you'll, um, hotels, stores, banks, restaurants, um, they usually take most of those major credit cards. However, um, some credit card companies do charge a foreign transaction fee. So you may want to check with your credit card company to see what that foreign transaction fee is and if they charge it. So also you'll want to note that most retailers in Europe use a smart card system, which is the one with a little chip, um, like in the picture here, the little master card has got the chip on there, um, instead of the magnetic strip technology like we still hear, use here in the US. Now, if you have requested one of these types of cards from your bank, you may also want to set up uh, your four-digit PIN before you depart the U.S. And we do recommend that you contact your credit card company or bank before you depart, no matter what, just to let them know that you're going to be traveling outside the U.S. And so they won't um, put your card on hold for what appears to be suspicious charges. You may also want to make a photocopy of the front and the back sides of your cards and leave them behind with someone in case your cards are misplaced or stolen. Now, ATMs are readily available in larger cities, and we do not recommend taking traveler's checks just because they're not widely accepted as they used to be. Now, if you're interested in um, finding out what the currency exchange rate is, I would recommend going to oanda.com. We've got that website here on the screen. Um, if you just want kind of a quick, easy way to do it, I, um, I put the, just some um, basic exchange rates out to the, um, the right there. So for Norwegian kroner, which is NOK, you would take whatever it is and divide it by eight to get the US dollar amount. So let's um, move on to you actually getting to Norway, where, or Scandinavia, where you're going to meet your group and your guide. So airport transfers in Scandinavia are included for passengers arriving and departing on designated flights on our escort tours. So after you get off the plane and collect your luggage, you'll proceed through passport control. You'll see two exits, green if you have nothing to declare and red if you have something to declare. Most of the time people just go to the green because they don't have anything to declare. So you'll choose the appropriate exit and then after leaving the customs area, you'll continue to the arrival hall where you will meet your school director. And so you'll see somebody standing around that has a recce sign, and that will be your school director. So if you're arriving outside of the, or on a different flight from the group, um, you're welcome to join our transfers, provided that the arrival time is somewhere. So just send us an email to let us know um, what your flight number is and the arrival time. And we can get that, um, we'll let our tour director know to look out for you. That way, um, also we need that information. If for some reason your flight's delayed, um, you know, they won't um, wait around for you probably. So you would then be responsible for your own transportation to the hotel. Now, if your arrival doesn't coincide with the group transfer, not to worry. You can choose from several modes of transportation from the airport to the hotel. Airport buses um, with frequent departures run from the airport to the city center and vice versa in each of the Scandinavian capitals. You also have the option of taxis, and some of the larger cities do have trains that may be available from the airport to the city center. Um, just a, a note about the bus and the train. Um, most of the time they do make a stop in the city center at a central station. And from there, you may have to take a taxi to your hotel, depending on how far it is. So if you are transferring with the, the group, you will, you know, the guide will give you some instructions about where to meet for dinner um, that night. Uh, basically, we usually have dinner at 6.30 p.m. at the arrival hotel. So if you're arriving outside of the group and you want to know where you're going to meet your group that night for dinner, um, you can check in your departure letter. We have that listed. And then if you need some information about the transfers, how to get from the airport to the hotel on your own, I would recommend looking at page 12 in your Helpful Hints booklet. 
and it has the different options for the various um, arrival cities. So most of our, uh, well, just about all of our um, escorted tours will be traveling on Iceland Air. So I wanted to give a little bit of information about this particular airline. So if you're departing from Minneapolis, there are two terminals at the Minneapolis um, St. Paul International Airport. Terminal 1, which is Lindbergh, and Terminal 2, which is Humphrey. Now, Iceland Air serves Terminal 2, Humphrey. If you have a domestic flight and a Terminal 1, there is free transportation between the two terminal buildings. So you can look again in our Helpful Hints book for some more information on that. <laughs> now, all Iceland Air flights will route through Keflavik Airport in Iceland. So passengers arriving on Iceland Air and continuing on, we'll need to show their passport and customs before heading to um, your next gate for the next flight um, of your flight to Scandinavia. You will not, however, need to collect your luggage in Reykjavik if it's been checked through to your final destination. So say you're flying from Minneapolis to Oslo. What you will do, you will fly from Minneapolis to Reykjavik. You will get off the plane in Reykjavik, or in Keflavik, which is um, the airport. Uh, you will have to go through passport control, so you'll show your passport, you'll go on to your next gate, and then you'll continue on to Oslo. So you will not have to collect your luggage as long as it's tagged through to Oslo. So just to make that clear. <laughs> so you will have to switch planes in Iceland, but the layover is much shorter um, than if you were flying through Amsterdam or things like that. You only need about 30 to 45 minutes to go from gate to gate. So you should have a pretty a uh, short connection in Iceland, so if you see that you've only got, you know, 50 minutes or an hour, um, it's not to worry because you, you should have plenty of time. The couple of airport is really well laid out and it's easy to skirt around. So during your flight with Iceland Air, you can expect uh, free flight entertainment, and but headphones are for sale. So if you plan on um, taking advantage of their in-flight movies or the music, you can either buy headphones there or you can bring your own. I would just recommend bringing your own. There, um, they do offer complimentary water, soft drinks, tea, and coffee. Uh, but food is for purchase on Iceland Air um, unless you're seated in economy comfort or spot up. So if you have requested an upgrade on your seats um, to economy comfort, economy comfort or saga, then you will receive your meals for free. If you're seated in economy, though, um, you will need to purchase your food. So, or you can bring something on board. So if you find something in the airport that you would prefer to bring on board, you can do that as well. So for those of you that had requested window or aisle seats on your tour applications, we did send that request um, to Iceland Air or to the airline. However, we cannot guarantee that the airlines won't change or cancel the seats after the request has been made. And I have the perfect example for that. I flew on SAS not um, just a couple months ago. They have confirmed my wind seat for my international flight. I, I um, got the little note from them. The seat was confirmed. And then when I go to check in at the airport, I am in an aisle seat now. So they have control over that. We have, I wish we could have control over that, but honestly, we, we cannot. So um, if, you're, if we are not able to assign your seat at the time of booking, you will be assigned a seat when checking into your flight. So for instance, when you, um, when you get your boarding pass at the airport, if there's um, no um, seat number on there, they will give you one um, either at the gate or when you check in. So uh, you do have a seat on the plane. You have paid and we have reserved that seat. It's just they, they do um, wait and assign those sometimes, right up at the very end. If for some reason you need wheelchair assistance or an electric cart for the transfers, um, please just let us know. We can request that. But we do ask that you um, re-verify um, that with airports when you check in. So uh, how to avoid jet lag. So there are some things that you could do to help um, reduce the amount of jet lag that you have whenever we're arriving in Scandinavia. So if your flight arrives in the morning, try to sleep on board. And if you're like me, you have trouble sleeping on um, an airplane, you might want to try over-the-counter sleeping aids, such as Tylenol PM, um, things like that. You may also want to bring an eye mask, earplugs, 
a blanket or a pillow, and I will help you sleep. You may also want to bring a toothbrush and anything else that isn't a liquid or a gel that you um, want to use to help kind of freshen up before you get off the plane. Wear loose-fitting clothing and wear comfortable shoes. You may also want to try to avoid taking them off as feet do occasionally swell on long flights. When possible, walk up and down to stretch your limbs and get the blood circulating. If there's an in-flight uh, exercise video, you may want to participate in that as well. Uh, these are designed to help with body circulation and reduce fatigue. So that's a good idea to take advantage. You'll want to drink plenty of water on the plane and try to avoid alcohol, caffeine, and carbonated drinks. Avoid wearing contact lenses in flight because the cabin air really tends to dry them out. And if you do get air sick, drink a small bottle of ginger ale before boarding and pack a newspaper in your carry-on bag. The ginger ale will help calm your stomach and so will the smell of newspaper. So once you arrive, spend a lot of time outside in the sunlight. This will help your body reset its natural time clock to coincide with your new surroundings. So uh, some information about the hotels that we'll be using on our tours. The first thing you may notice about your hotel room is that it's smaller than what we expect here in the U.S. and that not all of them will have an air conditioner. So all the hotels used on our itinerary do have a private bathroom with a shower or a tub, a toilet, and a sink. So you'll have a private bath, but um, just come to expect that some of them are going to be a little bit smaller. If you do get to your room and think there's a fuse blown when the lights and the TV don't turn on, um, you just want to rethink that. Many hotel accommodations in Scandinavia will use key cards, which guests use to access the rooms and for the electricity. There's typically a box in the entrance of your hotel room where you can slip your key card in and control the consumption of energy. It's a great way to save power, but it's a little confusing at first. Now, some hotels in the larger cities will have a guest laundry room or offer cleaning service. Um, but usually these are an additional cost. So for more information on these available services, I would ask the front desk whenever you check in. Now nearly all hotels in Scandinavia offer internet access in their lobbies and a computer station. And more and more hotels are offering wireless connections as well. As well. Um, there's only just a few hotels that I can think of that do not offer wireless connections, and most of them have that for a reason. They are out in the wilderness. Uh, you're, you're there to escape the modern day society, so that's, that's the whole purpose. So um, wireless, um, like I said, most of the time is you'll find it throughout the hotel, um, in the guest room, and you'll even find it on the buses as well. So um, most of our buses used in Scandinavia will have Wi-Fi access as well. Before you set off on your own, I would recommend grabbing a business card or a map from the front desk. Just in case you get lost, you can use a business card to ask for directions. Uh, using the map in order to get back to your hotel. And most of the time you'll find a hair dryer, a clothes iron, or a pants press, along with shower gel and shampoo in your room. Um, if for some reason you're missing the hair dryer, sometimes they have it hidden in a drawer or something like that. Uh, or if it's just simply not there, you can call down to the front desk and they'll bring the items that you're missing. So the physical expectations on our tour. Most days while on tour, you'll start with a departure from your hotel between 7.30 and 9 a.m., depending upon the day schedule. A breakfast buffet is served each morning at the hotel, so you should allow some time for eating before departure. Your guide will advise each evening of the next day's departure time. So you can expect to arrive at your hotel around 6 p.m. Um, each night, sometimes earlier. On travel days, we'll stop. We'll make several stops to allow for rest and breaks and sightseeing activities. And while most tours are leisurely, you can expect to walk short distances each day, sometimes over uneven terrain such as cobblestones. You will need to be able to climb the steps in and out of the bus. And you might want to note that restrooms can be located in lower levels of buildings, and sometimes there are no elevators. So we just want to make sure that you're aware of this issue. If assistance is needed, we ask that you get a qualified and physically able companion to assist you. You can, of course, choose to opt out of any activities while on tour. We leave that at your discretion. Motorized scooters are really not suitable for our escorted tours. 
So because we cannot unfortunately control the universe, um, things do happen that are beyond our control. And if something does happen while you are overseeing the assistance, here are a few helpful tips. First, ask help from your tour director or your tour guide. Um, off luggage, to finding you a place to eat, your tour director is there to help ensure that your vacation is as carefree as possible. If you happen to leave your phone behind in your hotel room, or you need an injury seen by a doctor, or have something stolen, your tour director can be a huge asset in getting the help that you need. Now, if you're on your own, or you haven't met up with a group yet, I would recommend seeking help directly from the source, whether it be the airlines, the hotels, car rental agency, whatever. If you're lost, I would ask help from the locals. Most Scandinavians do speak wonderful English, and you'll find that most are willing to lend a hand if you ask nicely. Uh, you'll find that a smile really can open a lot of doors. Now, if you need assistance right away, be sure to know how to place a call while you're in Scandinavia and know what the emergency numbers are. Uh, if you look on page 31 of our Helpful Hints booklet, you'll find the contact, uh, emergency contact information for most of the countries you'll be visiting. Now, if for some reason your passport does go missing, Know where the U.S. Embassy is located so that you can immediately start the process of getting a new one. And finally, be adventurous. Don't let one bad thing ruin what could be a great trip. Just think of the stories so you can tell everyone back home. And perfect example of this, my husband and I, we were heading out of town actually last Friday. Um, an 18-wheeler ran us off the road. So instead of canceling our entire weekend, we just, we got a tow truck, we had the police out there, we got the car towed to the shop. We had a rental car waiting for us. We just, you know, made, made new plans, and it delayed us a couple hours, but we still had a great time. And, you know, it could have it could have been a really terrible weekend or a really terrible way to start the weekend, um, but you just got to power through sometimes. So additional um, other just random tips that we threw together that might be helpful. Um, and sometimes that we had wished we'd done before traveling to Scandinavia the first time. First, and I cannot stress this enough, save your poor toes and step over the threshold as you enter your hotel room. Um, many of the thresholds in Scandinavia are raised, and you'll find yourself stumbling if you're not careful. I can't tell you how many times I've stubbed my toes. So also be cautious in getting in and out of bathtubs in Scandinavia, as they tend to be taller than the tubs that we have here in the U.S. So if you're sitting in a restaurant and you just had a great meal, you might think that your waiter or waitress just keeps coming back to check on you, uh, but they never bring the check. So if you find this happening to you, just kindly ask for the check and you'll be on your way. So they really don't bring you the check until you ask for it. Speaking of eating out, uh, tipping in Scandinavia is not typical as many restaurants will include a service charge in your bill. So you can leave a few kroner rounded to the next five or ten for your waiter or waitress if they were attentive but leaving a 20% tip is really not necessary. And while we're on the topic of tipping, we do leave tipping up to your discretion on the tour for the guides and the bus driver. Uh, you'll find a handy guideline in your Helpful Hints booklet on page 23. You can offer a tip in US dollars, but local currency is usually preferable. Have you ever arrived to your hotel to open your suitcase and discover that your shampoo has exploded all over your clothes? And if you have it, I can tell you it's not any fun. So I would recommend packing your shampoo, conditioner, soap, and any other liquids that you may have in a Ziploc bag and just save your, save your poor clothes. And you may also want to bring a bit of soap um, if you want to hand wash any items to rewire while you're traveling. Another handy tip, uh, call your bank and credit card company. You really cannot trust this enough. Um, before you leave the U.S. to let them know where you're going, for how long, and to expect some charges to show up. The last thing you want to have to worry about on your trip is how you're going to pay for things. You can, um, I would recommend taking a couple of days before you actually leave. This will give you a chance to hopefully catch anything that you might have missed. And finally, pack some snacks to take along with you. Um, granola bars, trail mix, and You can then use this space to bring home the items that you've purchased along the way. So we did have quite a few questions that came in with the um, webinar registration form, and so I just wanted to go over some of the, the, more, asked, the more asked questions um, so that we can get a lot of those out of the way. 
Uh, one of the questions, of course, is how much money should I bring? And this is a really hard question to answer because really it depends on a number of factors. The length of your stay, the extent of your travel, um, your shopping and sightseeing plans. Uh, you'll find that most of our tours, you'll have all of your breakfast and some of your dinners included. Uh, lunches, however, are usually left up to you. So you can expect to spend about six, 5 to $15 for a lunch in Norway. But really, if you eat a large breakfast, which you shouldn't have any problem doing considering the breakfast that you'll find in Norway, uh, you can bring a snack with you. Again, the granola bars, trail mix, that sort of thing. Um, and if you eat a decent dinner, you probably won't be needing lunch very often. Um, other expenses are really just of a personal nature, such as laundry, drinks at dinner, uh, taxes, and then gratuity for your driver and guide. So I would, like I said, recommend bringing a bag of snacks with you um, or putting, it, putting some in your um, check luggage. Um, you can also pack an empty water bottle. So just refilling your water bottle every day will save you 2 to $3 a day. Um, and then on the way home, you can use the space that you had your snacks and your water bottle in to uh, store your souvenirs. So how will I recognize others on the tour? So once you get off your plane in your arrival city, the easiest way to spot other Brecky tour participants is to look for the Brecky bag or a luggage tag. So we made our tag really bright um, to stand out, um, so that they're easy to spot. So not only will it help you locate your luggage, it could help you locate um, potential friends on your tour. So um, if I arrive early, where do I meet the group? If you decided to book a free tour extension, the easiest place to meet your group is at dinner the night um, the group is scheduled to arrive. You should receive the time to meet your group for dinner in your information packet, and typically it's around 6.30 or 7, most of the time 6.30. Could I bring a cap and mitten? Uh, personally, I prefer to be uh, for to have a chance to be warmer than colder, so if your tour includes time on a boat, which most of them do, or treks um, up north of the Arctic Circle or into the mountains, it's certainly not a bad idea to pack some warmer clothing. You can always take a layer off if you're warm, but if you're cold and left those items at home, then you're just going to be cold. So um, until you can find a store where you can purchase those items. Are seats assigned on the motor coach? Um, no, we do ask that everyone on our tour switch seats on board, um, you know, every day or maybe um, after lunch, something like that. Uh, so that way everybody gets a chance that where they want. And will I need to collect my luggage in Iceland? Um, if you're flying with Iceland Air, you will have to stop to change planes in Iceland. However, as long as your luggage is tagged to your final destination, say Oslo, Bergen, Stockholm, wherever it is you're going, you should not have to collect your luggage in Iceland for it to land safely in your rival city. Uh, do my medications need to be in a pharmacy labeled bottle? So the TSA currently doesn't require passengers to have their medication in prescription bottles. However, I would recommend taking a copy of your prescription or snap a picture of the pharmacy label so that you have that in case you accidentally like to pill down the toilet or you leave them behind somewhere. It would be a little bit easier to get them refilled. Can I use my phone in Norway? So unless you have an international plan, your phone will probably not work in Norway. You can contact your carrier about an international plan, but there are ways to make calls back home um, when you're connected through Wi-Fi, either through FaceTime, Skype, or one of the other video chat applications. Um, just be sure to download the app uh, to your phone and try them out before you head overseas. Now, prepaid SIM cards are another option, but I would recommend contacting your carrier um, via Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, whoever before you depart the U.S. to make sure that your phone can be used with a SIM card. So can we um, visit our family farms or can those be arranged? And we can certainly help you with those arrangements uh, to visit your family heritage site. Uh, if you're traveling near your family heritage site, just please let your tour director know and if it's possible we can try to drive by and even stop for a short visit to take pictures. If you're wanting something, um, you know, wanting to spend a little more time, then uh, please just contact our office and one of our agents can help you. We can check on transportation options and create a customized plan for your visit. So um, we've had a lot of people that 
stay stay their family farm is near Oslo, so they'll take the day that um, we have a sightseeing tour scheduled, and they'll skip that and go visit their family farm, and that's perfectly acceptable. We we do that all the time, so it's not a problem. What should I be aware of when exploring on my own? Now, safety when traveling can really weigh heavily on you. What if I get lost? What if my bags are stolen? What if there's an attack? So anything you do comes with an inherent risk, but you can minimize this risk by traveling smart. For instance, don't be an easy target. Keep your head up, eyes looking around, acknowledge, acknowledging people coming and going. And don't be flashy. Don't walk around with expensive camera or fancy jewelry hanging around your neck. Don't draw negative attention to yourself. Um, avoid crowded areas if possible. And if you cannot, please stay aware. You know, if somebody is kind of acting um, a little abnormal, you know, please alert an authority figure. Uh, it helps to learn a few phrases in the local language. And of course, watch your personal belongings. So, um, you know, uh, for, for the ladies, if you are planning on taking a purse with you, I travel usually with a uh, crossbody strap, and it's usually a thicker strap, so that it makes it um, less likely to, likely to be stolen. And for um, men, you know, maybe keep your wallets in your front pocket if possible. Um, actually, one of our guys recommended putting a rubber band around it so that it's not as easy to slip out of your pocket. So that's a good idea. Now, if for some reason you miss your flight, uh, the first thing to do is to talk to the airline to see if they can't get you on a different flight. Um, the next step would be to contact your travel insurance company if you've purchased travel insurance. Missing flights can, of course, be a costly issue, so if you purchase travel insurance, it can help offset any of these out-of-pocket out of pocket expenses for missed flights, delays, or cancellations. And finally, send an email to our office. Um, it, it's helpful so that we can advise your tour director of the issue and make any necessary arrangements so that you can catch up to the tour group. And if you're worried that you will starve while traveling on our tours, not to worry. Each morning you'll be greeted with a full Scandinavian breakfast buffet, which usually includes a variety of breads, cereal, fruit, yogurt, meat, warm dishes such as scrambled eggs and uh, bacon or sausage, cheese, jams, and more. So if you leave the breakfast area going hungry, you're doing something wrong. Uh, for dinner, it's pretty much the same. You get a variety of uh, meat or fish, uh, fruits and veggies, bread, potatoes, and of course the dessert. So, all right. So now I'm going to open that up to to you guys um, to ask some questions. So let me just open those up. Oh, we got some questions. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, Susan, uh, Suzanne, you had asked when can we book our seats. So if you had um, on your tour application form, if you noted that you wanted to sit um, by the exit door, then we we have submitted that to the airlines. Um, but again, they are the ones responsible for assigning the seats. But we do try to accommodate those requests when we can. Uh, Pamela, you asked about health issues and if our insurance will cover the expense. So most of the time, uh, your U.S. Um, health care will not cover um, outside of the country. Now what you can do is say that you need to see a doctor while you're traveling in Norway. You will pay um, up front there, but then when you get home, you can submit a claim so, um, to your insurance, and usually they will, will cover that. Um, so just keep track of that paperwork, um, you know, if for some reason you have to see a doctor. And again, this is where travel insurance comes in handy because it does help um, cover the, some of those expenses. So, um, David, you had asked if our family would like to text us. Well, they need to use the 01147 in front of our cell phone number to reach us. Um, usually, it's just the, the cell phone number alone. Um, our country code is 01, so they would probably need to dial that first. So, Caroline, um, the, I will have to check on that. I'm pretty sure um, you guys would receive. Um, Caroline, Carol had asked if uh, her sister and and uh, her are traveling together but live in different states to re receive our own packets. And yes, you should. Um, but I will double check on that. So that shouldn't be a problem to each um, to you guys your own packet. Uh, can you bring a power strip? plug in your converter adapter if you need more than one plug-in. 
I honestly don't know, Mindy, um, just because I am not sure what the capabilities of um, the power strip, I'm not sure how that would um, work. I don't think there would be a problem, but I will, I will have to check on that and get back to you. I've never taken a power strip with me, so I honestly don't know. Um, Pamela, you also asked about taking a bus from Bergen to Savanger to meet the tour group. That is not a problem. Just, um, just send us a note to uh, the tours at brekkytours.com, letting us know what you're wanting to do, and we can get that arranged for you. And I think actually there, there used to be a ferry running from Bergen to Swanger and vice versa, and I think they are starting that back up again, but I'm not sure when that will be. So, um, so we can either get the bus, or if you prefer, we can check on the ferry and see if that might be an option for you. Um, Mindy, you had asked, how can we ensure that we step by our group members? Um, if you put on there that you were traveling with, um, you know, other people, then we do try to try to get you guys um, seated together. So, oh, and um, is it, uh, oh, and Mindy, you had also asked about. Um, small hand soap and our toiletries. Yes, most of them do have um, the toiletries and um, hand soap and things like that. Um, and Marlene, you had asked about the bus having Wi-Fi, and yes, most of the buses that we have, um, that we use for our tours will have Wi-Fi on hand. So um, usually you just hop right on and it's not a problem. Linda, I am not sure what time you get back to Minneapolis on July 8th, but that is something that I can find out and let you know. Um, and Linda, you'd also asked about tipping the driver each day. Is it the same driver the whole time? Uh, so we tip at the end of the tour. So we, we will have um, some city drivers. Um, say you're coming into Oslo. Um, the next day, you usually have a sightseeing tour, and that will be one bus driver. And so, yes, you would probably want to tip him at the end of that um, particular tour. But when you're traveling over um, overland, so you, once you depart Oslo, um, you go through, um, you know, Flam and Davos or Loftus into Bergen, you will have the same driver for several days. So, and then you could just tip him at the end. Um, usually the tour guide or tour director will let you know if he's departing um, so that you can uh, tip them. And uh, Margaret, you had asked if couples will be seated together. Yes, we do try to seat couples together um, if at all possible. Uh, Jill, you uh, tend to get motion sick on a bus. Um, yes, I would just mention that to your tour director just to let them know that, you know, that's uh, an issue, and that way we can maybe reserve a couple of seats up at the front um, for others, you know, that may get motion sick as well. Uh, is sunscreen need lay or Liam uh, when traveling around the Arctic Circle? Well, um, if you're traveling in June, July, and parts of August, you will have almost 24 hours of daylight. And if you're like me, I I burn very easily. So um, I would bring sunscreen, uh, especially if you're planning on being outside for any length of time. So I, I would bring sunscreen. It's just a good idea to have on hand. And yes, uh, Linda, the Wi-Fi is free. And you can email people. The best thing to do when you get to um, Norway or Sweden or wherever it is you're going is turn your phone on to airplane mode. Leave the Wi-Fi connected. So this will um, prevent you from uh, using up uh, a lot of data on your phone and being an atrocious bill when you get home. So, but yes, you, you should be able to email people um, back home. Uh, and like that, if you have, like I have an iPhone, and so I FaceTime a lot when, um, when I'm traveling. Um, is there any way to be sure that each motel has a hair dryer, Lana? Um, I have not run across a hotel in Scandinavia that did not have a hair dryer. So I think you will be okay. Um, for uh, Timothy, you would ask for a couple, how many baggage tags should we have in our packet? So you should receive four. 
So um, you will receive two for you and two for your wife or um, your traveling companion. Uh, Jill, you had asked if you should leave your hair dry at home. I would. I, I usually don't bring mine. The only thing I bring is a hair straightener or, or a curling iron. So um, Ronald, you had asked about tipping for hotel rooms. That is included in your tour cost, so you should not have to worry about tipping at hotel rooms. So not a problem there. And we still have a little bit of time. If anybody has any other questions, please feel free to send those in. Hopefully I've gotten most of them. And again, I will be sending everybody a copy of this um, uh, presentation. So if you, um, you know, if you do think of any other questions, you can email us back and we'll be sure to answer those. Um, does the carry-on include my purse? No, it does not. So usually you have a carry-on and then a small personal item, whether it be, um, you know, a, a small backpack, or like a day pack, a purse, things like that. Uh, yes, uh, Ronald, you can tip in dollar bills. That's not a problem. Um, so uh, that is uh, not a problem at all to tip in dollar bills. And however, they do prefer the local currency, but if you don't have any on hand, I have tipped in dollar bills, I've tipped in kroner, it, they don't seem to mind. Um, Timothy, yes, I do apologize. Yes, you should have received um, two bag tags, so we will make sure and get some additional ones out to you. And Leland, I'm sorry, um, it cut off your question. So all I got is we are taking a so if you wouldn't mind please resending that, I can uh, answer that question for you. And we still have a couple more minutes. Um, a size of luggage and carry-on. So somebody had asked about that. Um, so the size of your checked luggage needs to be less than 50 pounds or at 50 pounds. And the dimensions cannot exceed 62 inches. So that's length, width, and height. Um, most of your large um, roller bags meet that requirement. For your carry-on, you would want to keep it at 22 pounds or less, and the dimensions should not go over 45 inches, and again, that's length, width, height. So, uh, Leland, you're taking a flight um, to Minneapolis. That would depend on if you, um, let's see, if you have booked your ticket independently, um, separate from the ticket that we issued for you for your international flight, you may have to pick it up in Minneapolis and then recheck it. So uh, if you have, if we uh, we booked everything for you from, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's Kansas City, um, in through um, Oslo or wherever it is you're flying to, then you should not. So. Um, Leland, if you wouldn't mind actually sending us an email uh, to the tour at breakfasttours.com, we can double check that for you just to make sure that that is um, that we get the right answer to you. Um, so yes, um, you can exchange money when you get to Norway. We do allow time at your arrival airport um, to exchange that once you arrive. Uh, Steve, you had asked if there's a guide to meet, meet you in Iceland. Um, the pre, you're doing a pre-tour, <clears throat> a pre-tour stop there. Um, probably not, unless that is something that you have requested. So um, most of the time, that is an independent package, and um, Iceland is really easy to get around. I don't think you'll have a problem, depending on what you're doing. Most of the time, um, whenever you leave the customs area in Iceland, uh, you come right out into the arrival hall. There's an information booth directly to the right of when you come out. <clears throat> and that information booth can get you anything that you might need. Usually the buses are just right outside. And that would transfer you to the city center. And then from there, um, uh, they take you to a, a single bus station. And then you would continue on on a smaller bus um, to your hotel, usually. So um, if you have any questions about that, please just email us and we would be glad to help you out just to, um, just to clarify that information for you. And uh, somebody had asked how early you need to be at the airport in Minneapolis. 
So I don't know if you've read the news lately. Um, TSA um, has had some issues lately with their um, staffing. And so right now they are recommending about three hours for international flights. Now there is a, um, there is a website for the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, and there is some information on there that you may find helpful that will tell you, um, you know, expected wait time. So you might want to check that out maybe a day or two before you depart, but just to be on the safe side, I would say at least three hours. Um, Jill, you had asked how many hours difference from the Midwest to Norway. I believe it's about six hours. So they are six hours ahead of time. So it's 11 o'clock here, so it's probably um, five o'clock there, um, that sort of thing. Um, uh, Ronald, you had asked about one brekkie bag per couple. Yes. Um, usually we only send one brekkie bag per couple. If you would like an extra bag, please let us know and we can see if we can get one out to you. Um, and Leela, not all of our group could be here for this webinar. Yes, I will send everyone that registered um, for the webinar a link to this presentation. I will be putting it up online. You can watch it at any time. So um, that's not a problem. And again, if you do have any other questions, um, you know, that maybe I wasn't clear on something or if you just have a follow-up question, please feel free to email us. You can also email, um, let me go back. You can email me. There's my email right there. Um, so you can email me. You can email our main tours account, um, and we can get you that information. So, um, or you can call us again at that 800 number if you just want to talk to somebody. So that's not a problem at all. We are here to make you as comfortable as you can be before you depart. I know I always get really anxious about a uh, big trip. So. Um, you know, thinking about, oh, all these things that could go wrong. But that's not the way um, you should think. You should think, I'm going, and I'm going to have a good time. So that's the way um, get your get your psyche ready for, for a great trip. So um, I, if there's no more questions, I'll go ahead and um, let you guys continue on your way this, uh, this morning. I do want to thank everybody for attending and taking some time out of your day. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. Um, if, if again you do have any other ones, or if you think of something later on, please feel free to email us, give a call. I will be sending out a link to the recording so you can watch it again. And um, if you haven't received your Helpful Hemp booklet, a lot of the information that I covered today is in there, and I would just take a few moments to read that. Um, it's got a lot of good information in there about traveling in Scandinavia, and hopefully, um, yeah, you can get some answers to your questions there. So, oh, uh, Roger, what is the size limit on your carry-on luggage? It is 22 pounds and 45 inches, and that is length plus width plus height. So, usually a smaller roller bag or something like a duffel bag, or um, you know things like that. Um, usually, the airlines have that little um, box that you have to fit your luggage in before you, or your um, carry-on before they'll let you take it on the plane. And I've been on some airplanes that even my backpack, it was the overhead bins were pretty small. So um, I usually take a backpack with me, just um, to put my computer and snacks and water bottle and all that stuff in, and that usually gets me by. So and then I, I have my purse as well. So um, so hope that um, that helps. But um, thank you all again for joining us today. I will. Um, be in touch via email with the link to this webinar presentation. And please feel free to call or email us with any further questions. Thank you all so much. And I hope you have a wonderful time in Scandinavia. And if you haven't uh, joined us on Facebook yet, join us on Facebook. Send us your pictures. We, we always like pictures. So I um, hope you all have a wonderful trip. And we look forward to seeing you in Scandinavia this summer. Thanks so much, everybody.